in this video i'm going to show you how you can stream directly to youtube utilizing obs studios even if you are a console player let's get started okay so for this method the first thing you got to make sure that you have is a laptop or computer and then open up obs studio if you don't already have it installed then i will leave a link in the description below so that way you can go ahead and download it so now that you have it open your screen is going to look somewhat similar to mine it's just not going to have any of the scenes or sources that i have if you're completely brand new to the software but what we need to do is we need to go ahead and connect our youtube channel to obs studio so from here what you're going to do is you're going to head on over to settings on the bottom right hand corner now when the screen pops up what you're going to do is head on up to stream and then in service you're going to click on the drop down menu and you're going to select youtube rtmps now it's going to give you two options from here what you're going to do is you're going to choose between use stream key or use the connected account if you're a beginner i highly recommend using the connected account so by connecting the account it will give you a little bit of options inside of obs studios that we're going to talk about later in this video but before we can actually connect the account we need to head on over to youtube and actually activate the feature to go live okay so now that we're connected to our youtube account what we need to do is head on to the feature to go live so that's in the top right hand corner under create like you're uploading a video and then just select that go live button from there it will bring you to a screen that basically tells you that you have to wait roughly around 24 hours until this feature is available so unfortunately you're gonna have to wait but once you're done waiting what you can do is head right back to obs studios so you can go ahead and follow along for the next steps okay so the 24 hours have now been up so what we're going to do is connect the account so we're going to click on connect account recommended and it's automatically going to bring us to our sign in page from here we're just going to select the account that we want to add and then you're going to get an option that tells you that the authorization completed successfully so that way you can now close this page once you close the page it will then bring you right back to obs and you will see your account has been successfully connected your username will pop up right here once that's done you want to make sure that this setting is turned off and you're going to click apply and okay now a doc has popped up on your screen you can put this anywhere you can put this down here you can put this to the side it doesn't matter where you put it okay so i'm gonna put mine right to the side and now you will see a little option on the right hand corner that says manage broadcast you want to go ahead and click that and what's going to happen it's going to bring up this page now this is basically the setting that i was referring to earlier in the video where i stated that obs will give you some extra stuff so you can manage your broadcast here so you can create a title but for this one we can put testing if you have a description you can go ahead and write your description of whatever this video is going to be about you want to make sure that your privacy is set to public and your category is set to whatever genre or niche that your video is going to be about now you want to make sure that you select either if this video is for kids or not for us it is not made for kids and now if you have a thumbnail you can go ahead and you can click a thumbnail for me i'm just going to just select this just for this video and you can go ahead and click create broadcast now we're not live just yet the only thing that we did was we just created the live so we gave it the thumbnail the description and everything so what we need to do is head on over to youtube to make sure that everything was imported successfully okay so now that we're back on our youtube channel what we need to do is click on our profile icon and then head on over to youtube studio from here what you're going to do is click on content and then click on live and you should now be able to see the broadcast that we have created inside of obs now if you want to view the broadcast you should come here to this little icon and click on view in live control room this is basically showing what we've done inside of OBS and lets you know that you have successfully created the live and it's ready to go. Now, before you click that button to actually go live, 
what we need to do is make sure that all of your settings scenes and sources are all correct so that way your viewers can have the best time watching your stream so what we're going to do is head back into obs and set those up so that way you can have a successful stream okay so we're now officially back inside of obs and the first thing we want to do is just make sure that our settings are correct before we go live so we're going to click on settings in the bottom right hand corner we're going to come up to video and we want to make sure that both of these tabs up here are at 1920 by 1080. this ensures that your stream will be in 1080p as well as you will be able to cover the full base canvas size so that way it can be full screen now depending on your computer and the specs of your computer you can have it at 60 frames a second or drop it down to 30. that all depends on your computer so just make sure you test it out and see how well it runs now once you're done here you're going to come up to output now this is the hardest one to deal with so this all determines on a lot of factors your computer your internet speed and what exactly you're, it is you're trying to do but the very first thing that you want to do here is you want to change your output mode from simple to advanced so just click up this at the top and just go ahead and change that once you got it set to advanced you want to deal with your video encoder right here so you can either choose the x264 i believe that's everybody's base um what they start off with if you have a game capture card you can go ahead and change it to that if not then you can go ahead and just leave it at the x264 or if you have a mac you want to use your hardware encoder now once you're done with that you're going to come down here to your cvr and your bit rate so we're going to leave this at cvr and then our bit rate is what's going to really determine how well our stream looks i have mine set at 10,000 because i have the internet speed to deal with this high of a bit rate but to be able to stream at 1080p only thing you need is roughly around six to eight thousand um, kilobytes per second in your bit rate so in order for us to be able to test out our internet speed to figure out how much we can put inside of obs studio we need to come to this website known as speedtest.net this website allows us to actually test our internet speed and gives us the exact numbers that we need to plug into obs so we're just going to come here and press go now when it's done it's going to look similar to mine so the main thing that you want to focus on to determine your bit rate is the upload speed what you want to take is the number that she was given divide it by two and then multiply it by a thousand and that will equal how much bit rate your computer can handle you want to try and shoot for your upload speed to be between 10 and 20 megabytes a second as that will give you a bit rate of 5 to 10,000 because according to YouTube the bare minimum that is needed to stream in 1080p is roughly 4 megabytes per second however you want to make sure that you have a little above that so that way you do not lose quality in your stream now once you figure out just how much kilobytes per second your computer can handle you're going to come down to bit rate and you're going to put that number in here now you can leave the rest of these settings alone because you really don't need to mess with those too much and then you're just going to press ok now that we have your settings finished the last thing that we need to do is add your game display into obs so if you are a console player then this one is for you so there is two ways on how you can do this the first way is to make sure that you have the xbox app on your computer this one is for those that do not have a game capture card if you do not have this downloaded just go to the microsoft store on your computer and search for xbox it's going to give you a bunch of options but this is the one that you want to download once that is downloaded you are then going to load it up and head to the top left hand corner where you see the little xbox icon and then select your appropriate xbox if you don't see your xbox then that's okay just select see my console list and add your xbox on the right hand corner and then go back to the main menu and start your connection now to get your xbox display inside of obs you need to come over to source click on the plus icon and select game capture now you can rename this anything you like but for me i'm going to name it as xbox from here you want to select mode 
capture specific window and then below that we're going to select xbox pc app now if your display shows up black that is okay all you need to do is just right click on your source head up to transform and make sure you select fit to screen once that is done head over to the xbox app on your computer then toggle window view now minimize it and your display will automatically show up on obs and you're good to go now if you do have a game capture card then what you want to do is click on the plus icon in your source menu and then you want to head up to video capture now same thing as before rename this whatever you like and then press ok now you want to go ahead and select device and then you want to find your game capture card mine is the hd 60x so i'm going to go ahead and select that so as you've seen, it popped up on my screen automatically. So therefore I just click okay and I'm good to go. Now that you have your settings complete and you have added your sources, you are now officially ready to go live. All you have to do at this point is just press the start stream button that is right next to the manage broadcast. And you can head on over to YouTube to check and see if you're officially live. All right, so we're now back into YouTube studio and we are officially live. So everything went smoothly. You can tell that we are live by the live bar that's on the top left hand corner and you can see my starting soon screen. So just head back into OBS and have fun streaming. Now that is going to be all for today's video. If you found this helpful, make sure you give this a big fat thumbs up. Make sure you go on ahead and subscribe as well as turning on post notifications so that way you do not miss a single video that gets posted up onto this channel. Peace out guys.